Okay, everybody. Uh, quite a few people have asked me lately for a, a demo on just basic drawing. And there's actually a lot of little details in drawing as far as hitting the standards in our classes and in the, in the uh, ANSI and ASME standards. So I'm going to have to break this down into a few pieces. The first one now will just be just the basics of getting the ortho views set up and, and a few, few little details and then we'll take more chunks as we go. So, so we're looking at a part here that's just basic plastic part with different cross sections to it so we can kind of play around with that a little bit. And if you've used any other software, and we can pick on that one that starts with an A and ends with a D and is spelled AutoCAD, um, but basically it's a very easy way to do drawings. Once you've got the model and your design worked out, the drawing part of it is really quite easy. The first step is just make sure your part is open and that you're looking at it. It doesn't matter what orientation or anything like that. Go up to the menu, go to file, and this is a really complicated step here, so hold your breath, don't get too excited. It just says make a drawing from part. So it's a it's a button click. So click on that. And uh -oh, wait all day for the little thing to go around. There we go. And then the decisions that we make from here out are the same decisions you'd make whether you're working on the board or AutoCAD, SolidWorks, CATIA, whatever. Um, you've got to decide what size border do you want to put this on. That part is fairly small, but I'm probably going to do it at a bigger scale a little bit. So I'll, I'll go to a C size, say OK. Tidal block and border comes up, and, and this is the nice part. It starts out with some default views. It's just kind of flipped your part around from different angles and says, you know, which one of these views do you want to start with? One of the tips I want to give is don't go by the name. Whoever modeled it may not have arranged it so the best logical front view is literally the one called front. So just look through the views and see which view would you like to start with as your starting view. I'm actually going to start with what they call the back here because there's a lot of detail to it and then I can flip some views off of that. So I just grab a hold of it, left click on it, drag it out, and it's already pretty big scale. We'll see if I want to go with that. I just drop it in place and the rest is pretty much magic. Just go ahead and just pull your mouse up, I'm not holding any buttons down, project a view and click. And pull over here to the right, project a view and click. Pull up here, get a 3D view. And I'm starting to see, wow, that's kind of that scale isn't going to give me much room to operate. So I'll just accept it for a second just so you can see that it really works few issues with these views. First really, let's just get that scale issue out of the way. So if I just grab a hold of this viewport, go down here to scale, and instead of using the sheet scale, go to custom scale, it's four to one right now. So it's a pretty small part. Let's just go two to one. It can still be a little bigger, but it doesn't need to be quite that big. Okay and then just rearrange my views. I start by grabbing the front view because the other ones kind of follow along. As I say, you know, as we get into other pieces, we'll do more uh, different kinds of views and specialty kinds of things. Today, this is just, just kind of playing with getting started. Okay, so just look this view over. Look these views and the arrangement and just basically ask yourself, you know, drafting wise, where would I go next? What have I got? I've got a front view, top view, right side, I got a 3D view. Well, first thing that hits my mind is I can't see any hidden lines. So I'm just going to click on this front view, go up here to the view icon, and flip from that guy, the hidden lines removed, to hidden lines. Now, that didn't probably help us much in this front view. There weren't a lot of hidden lines to see. But if you look at these other views, there's definitely some hidden lines showing. In, in these beginning classes, I want everybody to go ahead and just turn on all the hidden lines in every view except for the ISO. And the ISO will turn them off. So I'm just going to select that view, go up there to that same icon, and say, no, let's go back to solid view on that one. Okay. The reason I want the hidden lines is just to get used to that they're always on and then if you choose as a communicator to take them off or hide something or delete something, uh, you can choose to do that. But start with putting them all in. So now we've got some basic views. Next thing that comes to my mind is usually holes. Now this doesn't have a lot of holes or cylinders. It really just has this guy over here. I always just make sure, and, the, and the, the software defaults to this, that we have a good looking center mark on there. 
Right now it's just kind of this plus style. I'm just going to select it. And if we go over here to the settings, uncheck default. And I have experimented over the years and found out that about half of that, 0.05, looks a little better. And and it's kind of a, a choice. There are standards that control this, but really it's at this point, especially as small as that diameter is, it's your choice what that center mark ends up looking like. Because it's so small, it defaults to solid. If it was two inches in diameter, it automatically put in a small plus with the gaps and then the extensions. Okay, so we got a center mark on that guy. Another thing I'd like to do is get in center line. So since I have a center mark version line here, let's put a center line over in this right side view. Easy to do. Just go up into the annotations tool, go to the center line tool, and grab a hold of, really doesn't really matter much, a couple of the cylinder lines. And then I'll usually just grab that line and stretch it out have it stick out the amount that you want on each side, then that guy's ready to go. Okay? Making sense, I hope. Okay, so the other thing, I always have you look at this with a critical eye. As you see a drawing starting to develop, what's missing? So looking at the front view, I see one thing that I'd like to change. I don't want all these tangent edges. I got all these little edges from fillets and rounds that I'm not going to dimension to that, at least not in this view. I just want to get rid of them. They're adding clutter that I usually wouldn't draw in. So select that view. Let's get where we can really see this happen. Select that view, right click on it, and go to tangent edges and removed. You can go to a font, which will make it look like a phantom line kind of a construction. In this case, I still think that makes it just kind of fuzzy and indistinct and hard to read. So I'm just going to removed, and now I have a much cleaner drawing. Now, one thing that I did not account for, this isn't my part, and I just grabbed it out of the sample bin, uh, is all these little guys. So now I've got to really kind of think, do I want to leave those? Do I want to get rid of them? Or... Um, you know, do I want to go ahead and go back and leave those tangent edges in there? At this point, just since you saw me turn them off, I'm going to turn them back on again. Because I don't want to leave those little tag lines, and I don't want to go in there and delete them all manually or hide them. So back to tangent edges, and go to visible. Okay. What's next? So just, like I say, take inventory. Look around at the views and see what you see. Do you see something that isn't looking the way you would draw it? Well, here's some more tangent edges. Not those inside ones, but like this little line across here. I would not draw all of that. So same deal there. I'm going to grab that and see if I like the look of it when I switch off the tangent edges. So I'm going to right click, tangent edges, removed, yeah, definitely much cleaner, much more like what we want to see on the drawing. So I'll let that one go, and let's see how this one goes. Same deal, just some extra lines from the fillets and rounds. So right-click on the view, tangent edges, and removed. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, let's take a look real quick at the ISO view. It has tangent edges, but I recommend keeping those because if we turn them all off, this thing will start to be really fuzzy and indistinct in places where there are radiuses. It'll just disappear and you'll have this thing that doesn't look quite like it's held together. So I recommend keeping those. Okay, let me get a spot of lube here. It's just T, in case you were wondering. Um, and so now what I want to do is let's go ahead and just put some dimensions on. I will tell you this ahead of time just so you'll know and you won't think I was keeping it from you. There is an automatic way to basically stick on all the dimensions. I'm literally going to avoid going to it and showing it to you because it is going to stick them on in whatever way you've sketched them. And if you didn't take the time to sketch them right to ANSI, ASME standards and logic and c communication, uh, it really just makes more of a mess than anything else. So the method that I'm going to kind of push is putting the dimensions on there so you can control them one at a time. All right, I'm not going to fully dimension this, so don't start snoozing already. Let's just get some, some basics on here. So I'm, I'm in annotation. I'm going to go to Smart Dimension. And let's just go from that hole. By the way, I'd recommend grabbing holes, not centers. And you'll see why as we move along. And this can be kind of an odd dimension, but let's go clear the outside end here. And what else can we do? I'm just, just so you can get the idea, I'm grabbing... 
in that case a line here's another line you don't have to grab point to point or anything like that unless it helps you in certain cases um, let's see what else would I like to get how about an overall across the width of this guy and you, you just gotta think, put your drafting hat on for a bit here and just make sure it's coming out the way that you would draft. If these gaps aren't here, for example, you didn't grab it quite right. You got this extension line dragging across that line. Uh, just make sure that you're grabbing towards the end, you're grabbing the line. If I grab clear back here somewhere, then sure, the lines are gonna go right across the object geometry. Uh, one thing I do see that I want to change, and I just want you to see how easy this is, is this is all in two-place decimals. We're mostly using three-place decimals for the precision that, that we're working with, so I'm going to go change that. So basically what I'm going to do is just go up here to, uh-oh, I lost it, there it is. Go up here to Options, which is basically Settings. switch over to document properties make sure you're in ANSI standards at least that's the way we're working with most of our drawings we're using ANSI standards even if we're using millimeter dimensions and some you know metric system our dimensioning style will still be in this ANSI standards the other thing is to go to the units and set it to the number of decimals as I said earlier we're gonna kinda stick with about three decimals so I'm switching to three decimals under this length say OK and now all those guys switch over to that setting. One thing to notice at this point is notice that all the dimensions are gray. Now when it plots out, they really are prints out in your printer, it'll, it'll look okay, it won't be a gray, it'll, it'll be black. But SolidWorks has said, hey, let's, let's make the ones we put on manually gray so you can tell the difference between those and the ones that are automatically inserted. Well, I don't want them to stay gray, so just so you can see that we can easily change that. Down here in the left corner, I've got the line format tool open. If you don't see it, just go up here and right click and go look through the list for the line format tool, check it, and then it'll show up down here. All I want to do is change those dimensions to black. So let's just open up a dimension, or open up a selection window, go to the color icon down there, and force it to black. Get off the default, excuse me, force it to black, say OK. All right. So dimension is really it just not a battle at all. You just got to you know think about how you would really want to do it if you were kind of doing it manually or if you were doing it where you're controlling every little keystroke or whatever. Just grab a hold of the thing that you want to dimension. Here's a good example. Don't grab that line. That line is going from that endpoint to this endpoint where the tangent meets the line we really want the overall height so grab this guy at least this is one way there's lots of ways and this line and we'll get a full height and then I want to give maybe the location of this guy to that guy and I think I already gave the thickness of that somewhere else we'll let that go for now just just kinda of get the idea of how we can lay out these dimensions so that's a pretty good start why don't we leave that for just a getting started sort of guide and, and we'll talk some more later